right, guys. Now let's look at the setup of the Atom 500 system on your camera and how to hook up your receiver to your monitor. First thing we're going to do is to identify which is the transmitter and which is the receiver. And it's quite simple. Um, there's this uh, engraving on the front here that says Atom 500 TX. That means a transmitter. And if it says RX, that's a receiver. So make sure you have the transmitter on the camera side because they, they look identical. So if you have them backwards, it's not going to work. Um, so now, as we say, it's a plug and play system. All you need is HDMI cable. You need the video feed to get it going. And also you need power. So there are two options. One is the Sony L-Series MPF battery. And the second is the USB-C port that's on the side. That can be used for firmware upgrade or powering. So it's really convenient. Uh, so you can have, uh, if you run out of your Sony L-Series battery, you can have a power bank or anything that's with a USB output port. Then you can power your Atom 500 that way. You can now uh, mount it onto the camera. Uh, there are a couple ways to mount it. One is via the quarter 20 mounting points. There's one on the side right here, and there's one at the bottom that I attached the quarter 20 to cold shoe adapter to. And also you can see there are two front mounting point, uh, really tiny ones. These are for a really low profile build. So in a kit, you'll find that uh, there's a, a screw on attachment that can be attached to either the transmitter or the receiver so that the transmitter can be mounted on top of your coach you mount really flat. And that is best for a uh, handheld gimbal built or built that requires certain clearance. Right here, I just used uh, the included quarter 20 to coach shoe mount um, and we're good to go. Now let's go to the receiver side and I'll show you how I got that built. So on the receiver end, I have it mounted with a uh, Vex's magic arm. So this magic arm is quarter 20 to quarter 20. Like I said, uh, I used the bottom quarter 20 mounting point. You can use, also use the, the one on the side, or uh, in this case, we won't be using the screw on attachment because we don't uh, really need it to be that compact. And for wireless system to work the best, you want the receiver and, and the transmitter to be uh, to be raised uh, above any of the obstacles. And make sure if you want to get the best range out of it, you want to have the transmitter and the receiver at about the same level. So in this case, I have it mounted on top here. Um, all I needed, like I said, is the video cable, uh, HDMI here. And then the power cable, it's a USB-C cable that's included in the kit. Um, and on both transmitter and receiver, you'll be able to see uh, two HDMI ports. On transmitter, one is input, one is loop out. So if you are doing a bigger camera built that you need a field monitor, you can loop that signal out to the field monitor if you need to. And on the receiver, there are both outputs. So you can... Um, hook your receiver up and then receive that footage on two separate monitors. That's cool. So this is pretty much it for the build. And we're going to go and take a look at how fast it connects and how to connect them. So all you need to do is to flip on the power switch. It's going to automatically pick up a clean channel. Okay, now we're gonna power on the, the receiver. So it's on. Uh, now it's scanning through the spectrum to pick a clean channel to stay on. So it's kind of like a DFS system that it picks its own channel without interference. So you don't have to worry about what channel you wanna be on on the transmitter or the receiver. All right, now the video is going. So the cool thing about the Atom 500 system is that you don't have to worry about uh, whether your transmitter and receiver are on the same channel. Once they are turned on, they are going to lock into the same channel. They are going to be in sync. 
And if you think this channel is not that great, you can change channel. And whenever the channel is changed on a transmitter, the receiver will follow. So you don't have to worry about running over to the receiver. All right, so now you see how plug and play the system is. We're gonna go into the menu items on the transmitter and receiver. All right, so we'll get a close up on the transmitter OLED screen. Uh, you'll notice that when it's turned on, you'll hear a little bit of faint noise. Uh, so there are three buttons here on the transmitter. You can hold the left button and then you'll see the fan option is blinking now you can set the fan to high low auto or you can just shut it off if your audio guy is complaining but in general we don't get complaints about the the fan noise because it's a really good quality uh heat dissipation fan uh, so to go into menu item, uh, we'll hold the center button for five seconds. Uh, in the menu item, you'll first see pairing. That is that is auto. So whenever the transmitter and receiver are on, it's going to be automatically paired. So you don't have to mess with that. SSID, you'll be able to see um, VA underscore and a bunch of serial number. So this is gonna be like a Wi-Fi router. So it's gonna generate its own Wi-Fi, and this is the Wi-Fi router stand. So you're gonna you're gonna connect to this on your mobile devices. This is the password. This is the the default password. Every Atom 500 will have its own uh, default password. It's gonna be different, but you can manually set them to your preference so that people won't be able to tap into your feet that way also scroll down you'll, you'll be able to see uh, numbers of receivers connected so right now the atom 500 will allow one standalone receiver and three mobile devices on app to monitor the same feed now we scroll down to the app section you want to leave it on if you want mobile devices to be able to connect to the app. Scroll down, it shows you the firmware version. Moving forward, if you are you're on firmware 2.1, that means that your Atom 500, once it's linked to the app, it will be able to allow you to upgrade the firmware from the app itself. So you don't have to do the USB drive and all that. You just have to connect it. And then we'll go to return. This is on the transmitter side, and I'll show you the receiver. On the receiver side as well, you can hold the left button to control the fan speed or to just shut it off entirely. Uh, the center button, hold it down for five seconds, gets you into uh, the menu. So in the menu screen, we'll leave the pairing part as this. OSD, uh, this means on-screen display. When you have it on, on, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see a lot more information on your um, monitor. And if you um, put it on off, you'll pretty much be able to just see the, the video feed instead of all other information that's included on the screen. Scroll down to SSID password that we talked about that's the wi-fi generated by the atom 500 priority so this is important so depends on how you want the transmission you can either have it in latency mode or you have it in uh, image quality mode so in image quality mode you'll get better image quality better detail but it's obviously going to have more latency to it or you can have latency mode, which I prefer, so that the latency can be cut down to below 0.1 second. Scroll down, that's the firmware version. And then return. All right, so we're gonna move on to showing you guys how the app connects and how 
uh, those app functions will be able to help you. All right, so moving on to how to connect the app to the Atom 500. So remember, I said that the Atom 500 generates its own Wi-Fi signal. Uh, so you're going to need the Vexus Vision app. So go to App Store and download it. The Vexus Vision app is now available on iOS devices. So in App Store, search Vexus Vision. And for Android devices, you're going to have to wait for a little bit because there are more models in the Android line. And uh, Vexus is currently getting it figured out. So that'll be available soon. Um, all right. So let's go into the Vexus uh, Vision app. When you first go in, it's going to prompt you to connect to device. And when we hit that, it's going to just show you VX underscore. And it's going to ask you to type in the... Uh, the Wi-Fi name. So instead of doing that, that's a lot of work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Wi-Fi setting and just find the VX Wi-Fi. And for those that are connecting to it the first time, you're going to have to find out what the password is. And that information is available on menu of the uh, transmitter and the receiver. Let's get back into the app. Now it's connected. Here we got the peaking function that you can use. Uh, peaking is pretty much your uh, focus assist. There's zebra that can help with your exposure. You can do a screenshot in photo or you can record a proxy video. So this is a really, actually a really cool function to have for even professional set, for like script managers, scripties. Um, you can snap photos, do recording on your own. Uh, and then to the left, you get more setting, brightness, contrast, sharpness, focus peaking sensitivity. So this is where you can throttle um, how sensitive you want, how much detail you want in your autofocus. Also got the zebra threshold. So it's not just an on off auto, uh, focus assist on off zebra. You can actually define the detail. And then on to more settings. Here's your, uh, you can, you can have your different frame um, size. You can do grayscale. You can have the center mark, um, all that. So all these functions will come in pretty handy. And like I said, right now, it's taking, uh, it, it's taking one video signal uh, in the future. It may be able to go up to uh, two, three, or four of the transmitters all in one app. And then on the app itself, uh, like I said, we can have up to three mobile devices using the app at the same time. All right, so that's pretty much it.